Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church in our 1045 service. If you're visiting with us, we hope that you feel welcome and at home and experience God's grace and presence as we worship together. Also, I want to welcome those of you who have joined us online. Jot down your joys or concerns, and we'll, we'll share those la- a little bit later in the service. We're glad that, that you are with us. We're continuing our Entrusted series today as we give God thanks for those things entrusted to us and um, as the people of God and the followers of Jesus. As we have said recently, Christmas comes early, Thanksgiving comes early to uh, Bethlehem, and we filled 570 boxes full of food yesterday that will be distributed to the food insecure by tomorrow night. So good work with that. And, and most of those will have hams with, along with them, thanks to your, your generosity. At 4 o'clock um, this afternoon, we're packing Operation Christmas Tree boxes. We hope that you can join us. That will be just in the old sanctuary down that hall and, and to the right. It's a fun, fun event and a neat way to, um, to share God's love with people literally um, all around the world. Our church-wide Thanksgiving dinner is tonight at 6 o'clock in the gym. We hope that you can join us. Please come hungry. We have elected three new bishops for the southeastern jurisdiction, and and, uh, Jim Allen will be reporting on that next week. He's a little bit under the weather, but uh, we look forward to hearing an update on, on the conference. And, of course, Friday was Veterans Day, and uh, I want to have a prayer for, for our veterans, but also just encourage us to find ways to support and honor our, our um, veterans all the time. Uh, one way you can do that is to go to American Bible Society's website, and they give you an option for purchasing Bibles that will be sent to those who are serving in the armed forces. So you might want to consider doing that. I do have one little veteran story that I'd li- like to share, if that's okay. Um, a few years ago, I was training for a Boy Scout high adventure trip out to uh, New Mexico, the mountains of New Mexico, the Philmont camp. And so I was loading up my little backpack with about 40 pounds of theology books and rocks and, and, and whatever and hiking through the, through the hills. And I was telling my cousin about my training. My cousin was a medic in the Navy. And I was kind of bragging that I was carrying so much weight around. And then it occurred to me, wait a minute. He was a medic in the Navy in Kuwait during the Iraq War. And I said, I bet you carried a backpack, didn't you? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, how much did yours weigh? He said, 105 pounds. I said, well, forget, forget what I just said about my 45-pound uh, backpack. You, you, you know, we, I think we forget uh, just what our veterans do for us and, 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 and some of the sacrifices they've made. So if you are currently serving in the armed forces or if you're, if you're a veteran, could you stand at this time just so that we could recognize you and give you God thanks for you? Is it, are there veterans here? Harry Standen. <laughs> Go Navy. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Governor of nations, our strength and shield, we give you thanks for the devotion and courage of all those who have offered military service for our country, for those who have fought for our freedom, for those who laid down their lives for others, for those who have borne suffering of mind or of body, for those who have brought their best gifts to times of need. On our behalf, they've entered into danger, endured separation from those they love, labored long hours and borne hardship in war and in peacetime. Lift up by your mighty presence those who are now at war. Encourage and heal those in hospitals or mending their wounds at home. Guard those in any need or trouble. 
Hold safely in your hands our military families and bring returning troops to joyful reunion and tranquil life at home. Give to us, your people, grateful hearts and a united will to honor these men and women and to hold them always in our love and our prayers until your world is perfected in peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us worship God. Please stand as you're able and join in our call to worship. Come and find the quiet center in the quiet life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be. Amen. Please remain standing, and I invite you as we sing this song to bring your canned goods to the altar as we sing together Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. My King is coming soon. He will roll the clouds away. Light of heaven bursting through oh what a glorious day my king is coming soon he will roll the clouds away light of heaven bursting through and until that glorious day this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this 
is my story, this is my song, my king is coming soon. Hi Bethlehem, I'm Amy Everhart. You may recognize me as the frazzled mama who often wanders into church late at 8.15, um, many a Sunday morning. Today I'm here to speak with you on behalf of the Finance Committee. I wanted to tell you a bit about why we chose Bethlehem, what it means to us, and why we choose to support the church. Teddy and Georgie and I started to attend Bethlehem back when Teddy was actually just three and Georgie was one. We had been looking for a new church family now that the kids were ready to, to get back to church and I was brave enough to, to feel that I could handle them in church. Um, and so we had been to the Bethlehem Christmas program for kids um, a few times and we just thought it seemed so welcoming to families. So we checked it out and of course learned that that's exactly what it was. Um, and now I just can't remember a time when Miss April and I weren't great friends. We feel that the church has been so welcoming to us um, and has provided such a village um, for me and for my children. Um, and so now of course we're so proud to call Bethlehem our church home. While I was familiar with the church program, and of course I had heard of the famous fish fry, one of the things that surprised me the most about Bethlehem was that all of these missions that I had always heard about around town were actually based right here at Bethlehem. Bethlehem provides such an opportunity for outreach to our community and to show God's love and spread it, um, not only here in our community, but beyond. Operation Christmas Child, which is tonight, in fact, is one of our favorite events of the year. And just last week, we were able to meet up with some friends from Bethlehem to help set up for Room in the Inn. I want to do all that I can to make sure that the wonderful things about our church and its outreach will continue. So I do plan to pledge for the coming year. As a busy single mom, I have found that online giving has been particularly convenient. So I encourage you to check that out if it's something you've not done before. It's something where you can get on and you can actually set up a draft so that your money is drafted um, without you having to even think about it each week. Um, and then if you want to make special gifts, you can also go in and designate those gifts and mark them for where you want those to go. We are so proud to call Bethlehem our church home. We're grateful for the opportunity to be part of the Bethlehem family. Thanks so much for letting me speak with you today and God bless you and your family. So grateful for Amy taking time out of her obviously very busy schedule to record that video for us. We are sending our pledge cards out this week, so, so watch for those and support the church uh, uh, by those, with those commitment cards as you're able. Our ushers ready to receive this morning's offering? with me. Holy God, keep us on this journey before us. It's so easy to be distracted and wander off the path that you have for us. Remind us of the blessing that comes as we allow you to work through us and in us so that others too might be blessed. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. As I know there is peace within your presence, I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope 
and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety every soul held captive by depression i speak jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is love Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is power. Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus bless the Lord oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name I worship your holy name You may be seated So before we go in for a time of prayer, 
where have you seen God at work this week, this past week? I want to thank those of you who were there, who were the hands and feet of Jesus on Saturday to pack the boxes for Share the Feast. A lot of people from the community that were there, and it was a wonderful and very rewarding event on Saturday. Um, and those of you who are watching online, if you have any requests, please send it and Steve will pass it on to us. Any, any joys or concerns? Yes, Steve? Uh, two things. One, my um, six-year-old, my five-year-old turned six yesterday. Lou is six now, and we had a great little birthday party at our house. Um, and um, I would also like to share um, that I turned in 91 pages of ordination uh, paperwork, uh, so uh, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, I, I turned in my uh, commissioning paperwork uh, on Friday, so it was 91 pages and it was, a lot of, it was a lot of work, but um, I'm excited to see what God does with that. And um, I'll go to BOMEC, which is the uh, it's sort of interview process. I'll go to that in March. And so um, be praying for me as yeah, I continue thanks. my journey. Thanks. A great way to celebrate birthdays after you finish your 91 pages of paper. Any thanks, Steve? Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, Steve? I just want to pray for a little girl. Her name is Willa Wilson, and she was born with a congenital defect, and okay. um, she's been struggling now for six years, oh. and she's now on hospice. Um, they don't give her much time, and the mm. family, she has two, old, two other siblings, and so the family is just really struggling, and they need prayers, but they... They also need help, you know. And, uh, but his name is Mark, mm -hmm. and the wife's, the mother's name is Sarah Wilson, okay. and her name is Willa. So when you see a Willa tree, think of, pray for Willa. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Yeah. There's a um, path there. A lot of people may know, but Joanne Hart went home from rehab this week, and I visited with her shortly on Friday when I took a meal to her, and um, her sister is here with her right now and will be here for a few more days, but she's going to need some help um, getting to and from her physical therapy classes, and I know the Fenton Warren class does a lot of that, but she's just very thankful for her speedy recovery and She's come a long way in a short amount of time. Thanks, Pat. Yes. We need to give thanks to God for the remarkable recovery that she's making and continued prayers. Felicia? Yes. Hi there. Yes. I've got one. Um, <clears throat> this is a kind of conference wide that uh, we're uh, looking for prayers for the family of, uh, of Debbie Tyree. Debbie was the, uh, the associate pastor at Bellevue United Methodist Church. And she had a long history with our conference. She was the, uh, the head of the music division of uh, United Methodist Publishing for years. Uh, she led music at the general conference twice and almost every year, except for the two I did at the annual, and uh, was a very vital member of our community and one of the real um, bastions of the traditional worship style. So uh, prayers for her family. Thanks. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Please keep um, you know, Pastor Debris um, in your prayers, and um, especially during these final moments for peace and God's strength. Please, excuse me, please keep our friends Mike and Betty Willis in your prayers. They both have COVID, so they're, they're, it's not fun. So mm, anyway, yes. as everybody knows. That. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Yes, um, update on Gail Watson. She's been moved to a rehab. We've been praying for her. She is really very weak, very, very weak, going through some PT. So if you can keep Gail Watson, um, we are waiting for some more uh, test results. So keep her in your prayers. Um, that Dr. Goff is presenting a paper at Trevecca University tomorrow 
on the topic, examining teachers' perceptions on effective professional development in literary instruction through qualitative linguistic analysis. And, and the joy is just that I can read that title. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. Yes, anybody else? All right, let's look up to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this new day, for the freedom to worship you and to praise your mighty name. Lord God, it is your unconditional love that has brought us together, and it is your amazing love that continues to sustain us through each moment of our lives. Lord, we particularly thank you for this time of prayer. And so we pray that you would keep us faithful. And Lord, even as we await your glorious return, strengthen us to serve you and to work with you, to bring about here and now your reign on this earth. Lord, give us the courage to witness to your presence in the world in every possible way and in every opportunity that we are blessed with. Lord, this is a very special Sunday as we give thanks for our military men and women, both from the past and present, for their courageous service and sacrifice to our country. Lord, as we give thanks for their dedication and commitment, help us to remember that our freedom was secured at very high cost and help us not to take our freedom for granted. Lord, help us to be faithful citizens as we enjoy and share the benefits of our freedom, justice, and peace. As we remember our veterans and those who continue to serve, Lord, we thank you for the freedom we have in Christ Jesus, who is the source of our salvation and the hope and promise of eternal life. Lord, as we continue to be in your holy presence, Lord, we are aware, you are aware that we need you each and every moment and how much the world needs you, Lord. Especially we lay before you the requests that have been shared, that have been shared this morning, requests for peace and strength during final moments in people's life peace and strength as they are recovering from illnesses. Lord, only you alone can grant us hope and peace during difficult times. And so, Lord, we pray for those around the world who are physically hurting, those who are emotionally disturbed, those who are spiritually lost and are seeking for answers in their lives, and those who are financially struggling. Lord, we also lift up prayers for those who face distressing situations such as war, injustice, poverty, loneliness, hopelessness, hunger, homelessness, and natural disasters. Lord, in your abundant mercy, be very close to them and help them for you are our hope and strength in times like these. It is our prayer that you intervene on their behalf and provide for their needs according to your will. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And we pray knowing that you are with us now and that you will strengthen us to be watchful, to keep awake and to keep the faith and trust in you until you come back to us in glory and power. 
Lord, as we stand firm in you, fill us with your love and enable us by your spirit to help others come to repentance and faith in you so that they too might be ready for your coming in glory and power. I offer this prayer in the wonderful and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Start us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The kids are invited up to the front for children's moment. Some of our friends are, have been sick this week, so we're missing some of our friends. You can sit down here. I'm really excited. I couldn't sleep very good last night because today is our packing party. We are packing shoe boxes today at 4 o'clock in the old sanctuary, and this is one of my favorite days of the whole year. So I thought we could celebrate by playing a game of soccer with one of the um, 100 soccer balls that we're going to pack in the shoe boxes. We could have two teams. One team's goal could be the door, and one team's goal could be up here. And I have the soccer ball. Just a minute. Here it is. Good. You want to play? Yeah. How are we going to play, though? What's the matter? It looks like a bowl. It looks like a bowl. Oh, you know, several years ago, at the end of a packing party, we had one extra pump. One extra pump had not been packed in the shoebox. And we had thought of so many good things to pack in those shoeboxes. But in one of the boxes, we had missed the most important thing. The pump is needed to add air into the ball so that the ball can serve its purpose, right? Today, Pastor Craig is going to talk about some brides who were so excited about their wedding that they forgot the most important thing and some of you know you just had a wedding and we just had a wedding a couple weeks ago our daughter got married that it's a lot of work to put to have a wedding there are a lot of details there are a lot of things to get ready for so we thought we had everything the flower girls we had the cake we had the dress you had your stuff already we had uh a really good pastor lined up, and he was there on time. And then we had this really good wedding ceremony, and at the end, Pastor Craig said, Hey, where's the marriage certi license? Where's that marriage certificate? And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and then I looked at our daughter, and we had planned so many good things for this wedding but we had forgotten one of the most important things. We weren't sure where the marriage certificate was. And that's what they have to sign to say that it really happened, yeah. right? The marriage certificate. I didn't did, you, did you see it when uh -huh. it was signed? I, for well, you? I, I didn't get to go because I was with my grandma and pops. But then they did show me a picture of the certificate. Of the certificate. Yeah, that's the, the, one of the main things that's from the day. They had to mail it to Alabama because they forgot to ask my Uncle Davis to sign it. Oh, so it's very important, right? Sometimes in our life, we can be doing good things. That might be playing with friends, serving and doing good works, maybe even celebrating. And we can be distracted from what is most important. Our relationship with God is the most important thing in all of our lives. And Jesus gave us an example. Sometimes People would come to Jesus, and they would ask him to do good things. Jesus, come and heal my friend who is sick. Jesus, come and teach us about God's work, words. Jesus, come and make some more of that bread that was so good. 
And sometimes Jesus would not go and do those good things. If Jesus was off by himself praying, he would sometimes stay praying or he might go and do something different. And Jesus gave us that example to pray and talk to God so that we can be filled with God's spirit and we can know what God has for us to do, God's work, not just good work. When we pray and we fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit, not like this deflated lifeless ball, we won't drop the ball and we can then share God's light with other people because we know that we're doing God's work, what God has planned for each one of us. Let's talk with God right now. Will you pray with me? Dear God, please fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit so that we can shine the light of your love and do the work that you have for each one of us to do. We pray in Jesus' name, and we do that work through him. Amen. This next song is simply a reminder that when we're weak, God is our strength. When we're dry, God fills us. And that God is the treasure that we look for. So I invite you to stand as you are able. As we sing together, you are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus. my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. 
Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, John, and, and everybody. Can we praise the Lord for that great music this morning? Will you join? Thank you, thank you. And now, O oh Lord, what we know not, teach us. What we have not, give us. And what we are not, make us. Through the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit, amen. Our good friend, Scott Reel, who preached here about a year or two ago at Bethlehem, has just finished writing a new book called Journey to Transformation, which is a follow-up to his book, Journey to Freedom. And in that book, he, he tells a story about a couple who are engaged to be married in 1990, back in 1990. They went to the downtown Hyatt in Boston to plan for their banquet. So they poured over menus. They decided what food they were going to have served. They decided what, what china they would use to serve it on, silverware, um, the decorations for the table, and it all come to the big whopping sum of $13,000. A lot of money in 1990. Still a lot of money, but it was particularly a lot of money then. They wrote a check for half of that amount as a deposit. And then went home to look at announcements. About the time that it was, they were ready to send out the announcements, the groom started to have cold feet. Groom started having second thoughts and he, and he said things like, you know, this is a pretty huge commitment. Maybe we ought to think about this some more. And eventually he called it all off. So the jilted bride went back to the downtown Hyatt to meet with the events manager and she was very sympathetic and understanding in part because the exact same thing had happened to her but she said unfortunately the contract that we both signed we know about a little bit about contracts right the contract that we both signed stipulates that we can only refund you $1,300 of that money. Or, she said, you can still have a banquet. Well, the more she thought about it, the more she began to like the idea of still having a banquet. And she got this wild notion to have a party, a banquet for the homeless of Boston. About 10 years before, she had been homeless. She lived in a homeless shelter, but she got a good job, got back on her feet, and was able to put together a, a nice little nest egg. And she said, I'm spending it all on a banquet for the homeless. Now, the hostess changed the menu. They decided to have to serve boneless chicken in honor of the groom. And they sent out notices to every homeless shelter, every mission, 
And so the night of the big banquet, bag ladies and vagrants and addicts and all kinds of homeless people gathered together and dined on cordon bleu and chocolate wedding cake and sipped champagne served by waiters in tuxedos and they danced big band melodies into the night. Now, I think that there are several reasons why that woman decided to go ahead with her banquet. And one very noble reason, I think, is because she was determined to take something bad and make something good come out of it, which I think is one of the most noble things we can do. Not to say that what happened to us necessarily is good, not to deny that it was a bad thing, but to take the bad things in our life and to look for how they can be good, how we can transform them into something good, and that's exactly what she did. But I think there's another reason she threw that party, and it's because, as you well know, it is just good to give. One amen. Let me get one amen. Okay, I heard it. It was faint, but it was there. It is just good to give. As Dennis Covington reminded us last week, standing right there, quoting his son-in-law, pastor, we human beings are hardwired to give. We give because God gives. We give because we were created in the image of God, and it is God's nature to be generous. So I think that's why that woman gave, because every fiber of our being calls us to share and to give. But if that's true, how do you explain Matthew 25? You know, did you hear that text? Ten bridesmaids are preparing for wedding festivities in the middle of the night. Seems odd to us. We normally don't prepare for wedding festivities in in the middle of the night. But they did in the first century. And according to N.T. Wright, in, in parts of the Middle East still today... There are wedding ceremonies that that take place in stages and, and, and phases, and they do go all night, still to this day. And that's what's happening in our text today. They're waiting for the bridegroom to show up. Ten bridesmaids and five are wise, and five are foolish. According to the NRSV, some translations use, even, uh, use an even less flattering term than that to describe the foolish, but my wife doesn't let me use that word, but it's not flattering at all. Five are wise, five are foolish, and did you catch what made those who were wise identified as wise? They refused to share. I have my oil. I'm ready, I'm prepared, and I'm not about to share what I have with those who lacked adequate preparation for this fantastic ceremony and festivity. Now, maybe it's just me, but I can't think of any other Bible passage that suggests that sharing's not a good thing, you know? I love, love, love the motto of the Salvation Army. I bet you could say it with me. Sharing is, sharing is, let's say it a little bit louder. Sharing is, sharing is caring. Amen. Now that's not an exact Bible quote, but doesn't that fit the spirit and the theme of what we know about the Bible? And God, sharing is caring. It certainly, certainly connects with the spirit 
of Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Can I get an amen? Because we just had share the feast weekend. We didn't have hoard the feast weekend. It was share the feast. So what do we do about texts that seem to suggest, what do we do about texts that seem to suggest maybe sharing is foolish? Well, Sharon, we remember the principle that holds true for real estate, right? What's the number one rule of real estate? Location, location, location. Same tr thing is true really for the Bible. Context is everything. Context, context, context. And as John Wesley has said, when you're interpreting scripture, it's important to keep what he called the whole tenor of scripture in mind. In other words, when you're, when you're interpreting a passage, you can't just look at that passage in isolation of all other passages. It's important to see where that text connects with the whole story of what God is doing in the world. Anna Carter Florence, who teaches preaching at Columbia Theological Seminary and just happens to be one of the best preachers on the planet living right now has said that one of the things she does when she's working on a sermon and interpreting a verse <clears throat> is to read other verses, other passages through the lens of the passage that she's, that she's going to preach on. And she did that with this text. She took the Sermon on the Mount and read the Sermon on the Mount through the lens of our text today. Would you like to hear what that sounds like? The, these, this is, um, this is um, Dr. Carter's uh, words. Matthew 6, that's the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 6, 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Although to get there, you'll need large oil reserves. So forget the first part of what I said. Store up for yourselves oil on earth so that you'll have treasure in heaven. See what she's doing? See how she's connecting those? Okay, here's another. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what will you eat, what you'll drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Worry about your oil. That's the main thing. Worry about whether you have enough for you and forget about everybody else. They are not your problem. Or Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. Unless, of course, you're late and that bridegroom answers, in which case you might as well forget about it. And then there's the golden rule, the beautiful, beautiful golden rule, right, of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, 12. In everything, do unto others as you would have them do to you. In everything except for oil, which changes everything. Dr. Carter goes on to say, if the main message of the Bible is that it's important to hold on to what we have and to take care of ourselves, a lot of what we read in Scripture would have to change, right? would have to go right out the door. Like all the loaves and fishes stories, they wouldn't have any place in the Bible, would they? Or the story, the story of the feeding of the 5,000, that wouldn't be there. Or if it was, it would probably have a new title, like the moral of those who were smart enough to bring their own lunch or, you know, something like that. <laughs> now, I am still a Boy Scout, an assistant troop 
leader for St. Mark's, technically, and, and I believe in the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. You know, it's good to be prepared, no, no question. As I've, I've told, mentioned to the, ta- to the staff before, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. Preparation is super, super important. But I don't think this passage is about how Jesus is ready to slam the door in our faces if we show up a little bit late or a little bit low on oil. I think really it's just about our tendency to wander off away from the door and to invest our lives and our resources and everything but what is most important, as April mentioned in her children's time. There was a professor who was giving a lecture in divinity school on the spiritual life of the pastor. And while she was talking, she had somebody bring in a little clay lamp, just like the ones that the bridesmaids would have uh, described in Matthew 25, a little clay lamp with, with oil and a wick, and they lit the lamp. But it just had a little bit of oil intentionally. And as she spoke, the lamp went out. And then she said to her class, all who are going to be pastors, what happens when your oil runs out? What happens when your oil runs out, when the lamp goes out? If your lamp goes out, if your oil goes out, you have nothing to give. You have nothing to give. And a pastor whose oil runs out, a Christian whose oil runs out, can't shine the light of Jesus Christ no matter how much they might like to. The message of our text today is not that there are some things that you shouldn't share. You know what the message of our text really is? It's very simple. It's just that there are some things we can't share. There's some things that we can't share, right? One student can let another student copy homework. I know that for a fact. You know, I've, I've let others copy my homework, and I've copied other students' homework. Sorry to disappoint you, dear. But, um, <laughs> but you know what one student can't give another or borrow from another? You can't give another student the value of the time spent in study and preparation. You can't give another student that. You know what else you can't give someone else or borrow from someone else? Peace of mind. I can't give you my peace of mind. I can't can't borrow peace of mind from someone else. I have to get that on my own. I, I can't go to Tibet, climb up a high mountain, find the Dalai Lama and say, hey man, you look so chill. Give me some of that peace of mind. It doesn't work like that, does it? You know what else you can't give another person or borrow from another person, church? Passion for God. You can't borrow that and you can't give another person that. And I can't say Steve, you, you, you look so content in your marriage. You have such a happy marriage. Y'all, give me some of that. We can't do that, can we? There are some things we can't give, some things we can't borrow. And you know what? We are all, each of us, are all responsible for our relationship with God. There's a reason that, that the early church people would say, God has plenty of children, but no grandchildren. No grandchildren. You're not going to ride into heaven on anybody else's coattails. (laughs) It's all about our responding to what God is doing, and we can't give anyone our relationship with God. But you know what we can do? We can encourage each other to keep our lamp filled and to stay close to that door and to the one who longs to be with us and who is coming to be 
with us. Will you pray with me? And now, Lord, give us grace in this time of reflection to shine the light that only comes from you. Give those who have wandered away grace to return to you. Give us all grace to stay close to you. Give us peace in our hearts that we might love you. Give us joy that we might serve you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our hymn of response this morning, our song of response. It's a song you probably all have known or sung at some point in your life. If you know extra words to them, we're not going to use those. We're going to do these. <laughs> uh, but if you've got extra parts, anything you want to sing, if you want to move a little bit, feel free. Give me oil in my lamp. Man. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Burn until the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me love in my heart, keep me sharing. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Give me love in my heart, keep me sharing, keep me sharing till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Keep me singing till the break of day. Here we go. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Amen. Thank you for that great singing. Watch for the pledge cards that will be sent out this week. And if you're part of the Bethlehem family, please support the church, even if it's a small amount. And if you can't give financially, please pray and, and please serve. Your, your presence is more important than your presence. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> what I mean is there's two ways you can define the word presence. There's presence as in terms of being present and then presence that you give. And What's really important is that you're here. And if you can give financially, that's just, that's just icing on the cake, right? That's kind of what I, what I mean. Um, let us go now to shine our light in all the places that we go. And may the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and communion and power of the Holy Spirit lead you as you go this day and forever. And Stella and the whole church said, Amen. Amen. Blessed be the time that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above.
Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. 